still in love because of school and distance Aww. um how do i work on my controlling tendencies my anxiety makes me want to control everything great question wonderful 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 question um okay so first of all of course i need to point you to fix that shit um because this is absolutely how i control mine uh it starts with meditation right so there's there's some uh key things you need to understand here you need to reduce your anxiety, which means you need to shrink the part of your brain that produces stress, fear, and anxiety to facilitate reducing your anxiety. So you have to start meditating because that's what meditation does. It shrinks the part of your brain that produces those emotions. In addition to that, you need to practice impulse control. That means keeping your mouth closed until you think about what you're gonna say before you say it and not say it if it's one of those controlling things. It's hard in the beginning because you find yourself being quiet a lot, but the meditation plus the impulse control helps with, you know, with not doing those, those things. But then what you find happens is because you're not saying and doing those things, you're leaving space. Your partner can then fill that space with goodness, appreciation, tender moments, and you start feeling more secure in your relationship. The reason why you're so controlling is because you feel insecure. If you seriously wanna tackle this, come take my No More Insecurity program because that's what it's all about. It's, it's the stuff that I just told you now, but then we also plug into your individual moments, right? Like, like for instance, um, somebody that I was working with in this program, her and her boyfriend went on a vacation. There was girls around. She had a moment that she had trouble shaking off and it was creating distance in her relationship. We used one of her sessions to give her the perspective she needed to regain closeness in her relationship. Do you have anything for married couples? Yes, fix that shit. Fix that shit is a book for couples, you guys. This is a book that helps you get to zero fighting in your relationship. Hello, lovelies. Hello, lovelies. What's this? My abuser was just trying to be in contact with me, thankfully. I blocked him and renewed the orders. Yes, good, good, good. So many getting freebies. How do I work on my, yes, 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 yes. Yes, good for you. Uh, dealing with, uh, what's PMDD? Post, me, post menstrual, what is that, PMDD? I don't, I don't subscribe to labels, I'm a behaviorist, so sometimes I don't know what you guys are meaning with that. Uh, I don't get approached, could it be physical? Why aren't you approaching? Why aren't you letting people know you're available and you're interested and they should talk to you and make a date with you? Guys, did you see this? Yes, I'm wearing jammas. Look at this, we got Charlie. You changed the background, I'm missing the bookshelves. I'm just, I'm sitting in my living room right now because like, here's, I'm sitting in front of my picture window in my living room and taking advantage of daylight. Uh, I am overly critical of my relationship. Any recommendations so I can improve myself? Yes. So I would suggest you um, dive into fix that shit. Do what is in that book. Meditation. Resisting your impulses. That means keeping your mouth closed. Doing what I call a a um, conversation flow chart. Right. Is it a statement or is it a problem? If it's a statement, then you go, is it positive or is it negative? If it's negative, you don't say it. If it's a problem, am I the solution? Like, I feel uncomfortable with this. Well, what am I going to do? Am I going to meditate? Am I going to go for a walk? Am I just gonna stay in silence until the moment passes? Because it does, everything is a moment. I need to heal, recommendations. What do you need to heal from, my love? If it's, um, if you need to heal after a, a breakup, it would be comeback queen. Hi, key ugly. What can I do to improve my chances? First of all, know that there's somebody for everybody. There is somebody for everybody. Guys, I worked in a strip club. 
not every girl was what you would call a perfect 10, right? But they always made money because they had confidence in themselves. It doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter how you look. If you're confident with yourself, you're good. Somebody just got the whip. Just got the whip. Getting fish it this week is my final straw to save my relationship. Mm, my lovely. I would suggest a uh, coaching session as well. Do you think men should initiate contact most of the time or should it be 50-50? Um, I just don't think we should play games, right? Uh, if you, like, right, don't play these communication games. There we go. Uh, where it's like, oh, you know, it's been this number of hours since they texted me, so I'm gonna wait this number of hours before texting them. Um, you know, be reciprocal, right? And and just be straightforward. But like, here's the thing about this talking stage, which, by the way, it needs to be talking with everybody. No kissing, no sex, no sleepovers talking with everybody minimum three months but it should be more than just one person at a time so that you're not so hooked on whether or not somebody is texting you or texting you back or asking you out just do what you want to do say what you want to say invite them out when you want to invite them out hey i'm going for a walk you should come hey i'm meeting some friends you should come um, hey, I'm hitting the dog park. You should come. It's totally fine to reach out and invite them, but don't be so hung up on one person at a time that you're going to be disappointed if they don't pull through for you. I'm talking to this one, but don't be so hung up on one person at a time that you're going to be disappointed if they don't pull through for you. I'm talking to this one and that one and that one. And if this one, that being uninteresting because they're inconsistent, then that's fine. He said, he, he said I was gaslighting because I said it was controlling to have dating apps and not want me on them. So bye, motherfucker, right? Like, to have dating apps and not want me on them. So goodbye, right? You know what you're dealing with. This is a guy. This is a manipulating, controlling, gaslighting guy. So goodbye. Dump him. Get him out of your life. Stop having this conflict. Stop trying to turn a guy into a man stop trying to turn a person that you don't want into somebody that you need you need to control your environment this is not him that's the problem it's you that's the problem you're choosing him so as long as you choose him my love don't come here and complain about the choice you're making because it doesn't make sense i can't make this choice for you you need to make this choice for you you need to decide that you deserve better than somebody who has dating apps and says you can't have them. Currently hiding out in my room watching you after having a fight with my boyfriend. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, Casey, do you wanna come, come talk to me about your fight? My ex was talking to somebody behind your back. It wasn't behind your back, that's your ex. That's your ex, he's free to do what he wants. It's not behind your back, my love. You're free to do what you want. You're not together. You can talk to anybody. You can do anything you want. I'm moving into a condo with my girlfriend on June 1st. We've been together almost three years. That's awesome. How long sh uh, should the honeymoon phase last? So we can, we can, you know, maintain the honeymoon phase by making sure that we're having two kisses a day, minimum five seconds each and never treating our partner like a roommate. Um, so my husband and I, we our partner like a roommate. Um, so my husband and I, we've made out a couple times today already, <laughs> already, right? So we have a and days because we don't fight anymore. We resolved all the fighting. We, we have no reason to fight um, and we're happy with each other. We're cuddly, we're loving, we're intimate, we're close, we laugh together. So you can maintain a honeymoon phase. Just you need to, you know, trans, you do need to transition from courtship to reality. Things do change. How's my fees? It's just a lost connection.
my girlfriend wants to get married and I want to too. Oh, oh, I'm gonna open up my um my chat for adding guests. Uh, my girlfriend wants to get married and I want to too, but I'm not financially ready. Chris, do you want to come chat with me? Do you want to come live with me? I'd love to talk to you about this. What does it mean when a guy says you're intimidating? It means you should walk away. It means you should walk away. Uh, that's not good. He wants to diminish you. It's it's almost like an insult, right? And it's 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 like he's saying, I want you to be smaller so I can feel better. So this one you should walk away from. A man will never call you intimidating. He will appreciate your confidence. He will appreciate your success. Um, somebody who says you're intimidating, it's like they want to pull you down. Cassia, I want to come talk. I just opened up my, um, oh, watching after a fight too, Becky. Uh, you too, Cassia, Becky, Chris, you three. If you guys want to come in for a chat. I'm not choosing him. I dumped him. Good. Excellent. Excellent. So we don't need to look back at him anymore, right? We don't need to look backwards at him anymore. We don't need to complain about him anymore. What we need to do is grab a copy of No More Assholes. You need to get that book, my love. You need to start meditating. You need to start changing your vibration. You need to start changing how you feel inside, your perspective, uh, your confidence level, level up your definition of your next relationship like just moving forward moving forward moving forward no more looking backward the only time you look like backward is the only time you look like backward is uh you know if if you find yourself like oh i miss something you need to go wait a second no fuck you and keep moving forward i do teach you that part as well in no more assholes there's a section moving forward i do teach you that part as well in no more assholes there's a section in my dating books both of my dating books the one for men and the one for women it starts with first things first which is teaching you how to make sure you keep moving forward and leave the past behind you okay no miru what's your question love it says, I, it says I have access to the live future to go live as a guest. So come, 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 come. Guess, yeah. Come, come, come. Guess, yeah. What do you think about dating after breakups? Uh, so definitely you want to use the no kissing for three months dating rule. You can start right away. Right, get out there right away, start meeting people because you're not with anybody, you're single. So, you know, you can go, right? Um, the beauty about the no kissing for three months dating rule is, is you get out there and you are open to opportunities. You're not saying goodbye, like you're not saying, no, 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 I don't want anybody because if the universe is sending someone your way and you're like, no, it goes, all right, well, I guess I'll, you know, move that person over to someone else. So don't say no to opportunity. Just say, I'm going to use a no kissing, no sleepovers for three months dating rule to make sure I don't just fall into a relationship. I'm debating booking a session to chat with you. Also, my refix that shit, finding it hard. Yes, my love. I love your advice and wisdom. Thank you. Men are, men are scared of powerful women? Wrong. Guys don't like you to be empowered. Men are perfectly comfortable you being empowered. Men are empowered, but they are comfortable with their power. And, and they want a woman who is comfortable with her power because like attracts like. Guys don't want you to be empowered. They want you to be controllable. Men want you to be in control of yourself because they are in control of themselves. Guys are not in control of themselves. They are insecure. That's why they want to squish you down. That's why they want to get you lower so they can feel above you and feel more in control. Men are in control, so they don't need to squish anybody to feel in control. Eight months with my man and no big fights. Is this normal? It's not normal. It is absolutely okay. Uh, feel great, but uh, not used to the peace. So 
get used to the peace like really relax into this this is my new familiar thank you goodness for bringing me this thank you goodness yes i accept you this is your mantra yes goodness thank you i accept you yes goodness thank you i accept you as you transition into this more peaceful life being your new normal accept it love it can i say no my love we are here for q and a's What does it mean when he buys himself wedding rings and tells me, uh, but we don't talk about marriage? I don't know. I don't know. Tips for not taking your stress out on your partner. Start meditating. Guys, go to my YouTube channel. Go to my Let's Meditate playlist. Track number two, twice a day with headphones. Someone go live with her. How do I learn to accept love that differs from the type a caregiver gave me? Um, it's called translation, right? Uh, translation. So find out how this person shows you their love, right? So do a love language quiz um, and then translate, like look for those behaviors and go, oh, there's the love and feel yourself out that way. Go, oh, there's the love and feel yourself out that way. I went to Florida for three months because my relationship was extremely stressful and it had been for a very long time and I just couldn't take it anymore. And I did go to Florida for three months. We took space, but we didn't break up. It's, it's okay to do that. Just understand that if you take a break, like, I can't be with you anymore. That's not what I said to my husband. I said, I need to do this so I can stay with you. Um, that's different from, I, I can't be with you anymore. I can't be in this relationship anymore. That's a break, which is a break up. A break is always a break up because this is somebody who's ejecting themselves from the relationship. You don't get to eject yourself from the relationship and then say, I have to be single. Um, because that's not fair. It's not fair to say to somebody, I don't want to be with you, but I don't want you to be with anybody else. I already have no more assholes. This is my first breakup, so I'm struggling but trying. If you're hurting, hurting, um, do dive into Comeback Queen too. This does help with the emotional aspect. My boyfriend got offended because I DM'd my girlfriend a post of a gay man and called him a goddess. What is wrong that he is so insecure? Say, baby, um, I, I, I don't understand why you feel so insecure that there are people that are attractive in this world and we will notice them. Um, called him a goddess like you called him a goddess he didn't even call him a oh, bird in the window like a you called him a goddess like that's honestly like your your boyfriend that's his emotion to deal with and i want you to leave him with it i don't want you to carry this i don't want you to carry this okay this is not yours to deal with good uh, books for men for women is fix that shit for both so fix that shit right now is written woman to woman um i am writing fix that shit for men but it will be released in august Do -do -do -do. Oh, he yelled at me to get a job still can't find one i stayed friends with my brothers to destroy my new relationship i don't know what to do about it uh like to destroy your new relationship how can you destroy your new relationship if you don't give him access to your new relationship uh amos do you want to uh come live with me hi love oh my god what do you think of a man who always looks to please his parents on every level married 35 married 35 years old here's the thing my love um 
So hopefully that's not your man because you would have seen this before you got married, right? And so you chose that. You literally walked into this situation and said, yeah, this is going on, but oh well. Um, so, I mean, what do I think of that? I, my advice is to not get into a relationship with somebody who lets their parents or other people run their lives um because that's not something that's going to change right don't don't go into the situation and think oh maybe if we get married that's going to change no the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior that's what they're doing that's what they will do uh so when you notice that remove yourself from the relationship or better yet use a no kissing for three months dating rule and see that they're doing that before you get into a relationship and don't get into that relationship but at the very least, you know, if you didn't notice it before getting in the relationship, leave the relationship when you do notice it. Because obviously this causes problems. This causes problems. I want that peace, yes. Your kindness and honesty is so healing. Thank you so much, you're welcome. You're so welcome. Hello loves, where are my newbies at by the way? All my newbies say, I'm new, I'm new. Uh, tips on how to communicate with a man who struggles to be open about his feelings. So um, it was awful to let him out, yes. Um, so here's the thing, to get a man to open up, he needs to feel emotionally secure, which is what I teach you guys how to do in Fix That Shit. I teach you how to have a relationship that feels emotionally safe. Um, in that space, they do give more communication, they are more emotive and uh, usually more affectionate and want to spend more time with you. Uh, hello my newbies, my loves, hey teacher, look at you guys. Do you want, look at my alfalfas, um, do you want a notification when I go live? If you do, say I do and I'll tell you how. Hello, my newbies, all my new loves, welcome. Uh, welcome, welcome. I would go live and I'm shy. Okay, okay, lovely. I feel like our fights grew worse when we started long distance. Is that normal? Yes, it's normal for fights to get worse when there is stress if you two don't know how to reduce stress. Um, so for those of you who are in a long distance relationship, okay, look at my I do's. Hello, my ideas. Okay. For those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here. Once or twice, you're going to get a pop-up, and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say, I just did. Um, those of you who are in long-distance relationships, uh, I'd go live if you like. I just did. Um, those of you who are in long-distance relationships, uh, I'd go live if you like. Percy, what are we talking about? I forget what you just did. Um, so for those of you who are in long distance relationships, I actually have a free guide for you to download. If you go into the link tree in my bio, uh, you're gonna see there's a long distance guide. That's free. So go ahead and go get that freebie if you want it. How do you create that comfortable space? I want to make a safe and supportive environment. It is in here this is how you do it my love this is 50 steps on doing that and each of them is easy uh, what does it mean when a guy asks you to chase him it means he's lazy he's not a man he's lazy so don't chase him say goodbye i think i need a lesson on how to find a generous long-term thinker not a selfish short-term thinker so i'm gonna get that no more assholes book and I'm gonna read that because I need to understand that lazy people want me to do all the work. So you're gonna chase him, then you're gonna plan all the dates, then you're gonna make sure there's always enough money for stuff, then you're gonna make sure that the housework gets done and the bills get paid, then you're gonna make sure that you're paying for your own engagement ring, then you're gonna make sure that you're paying for your own wedding, then you're gonna make sure that you ask him to babysit the children you make instead of him just parenting the children you make. So walk away from that one. He is showing you obvious signs of being a guy. Obvious signs of being a guy. 
Question about red flags and dating dynamics. How do I know when it's the right time to move in with my partner? It needs to be at least one year of uh, being in a relationship before you move in together. You're so welcome. Uh, trying to get a request to go live with you, but it says I don't have access to the live feature. Okay, lovely. I don't know why. What does it mean when a guy, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, is that it? Questions about red flags and dating dynamics. Uh, it needs to be more, um, more like, that's so broad, that's so broad. Uh, yes, says you don't have the life feature, okay. I'm buying your audiobook, yes, guys. Okay, so I do have an audiobook, which is Fix That Shit. Uh, you can only get it through the link tree in my bio, just so you know. How long does the honeymoon period last? So, like, we, my husband and I have been together for 15 years. We had, we had a honeymoon period, and then I went into an insecurity phase that lasted years, years. Um, and, uh, you know, 10 years. Then I started doing everything that's in fix that shit. I created emotional security in our relationship. Uh, it took about three years of me doing what's in this book and being consistent with it. And my husband also at the same time, he was moving an entire business, so he was very stressed out. So, um, his behavior was also affected by his stress levels. Now he's less stressed about his business, about the move. Things have settled. Uh, he's he's okay. He's feeling okay about how things are going. Um, pandemic hit. His his workload didn't reduce at all. Um, reduced a little bit, but not significantly. So he's feeling okay. So his stress levels are reduced. Um, there's been no fighting in our relationship for five years. We are currently in a honeymoon period. Uh, so much love, so much affection, um, you know, just so much closeness. Uh, advice on power dynamics, like involving like age or money. Uh, as long as the youngest is 24 or 25, I don't care what the age difference is. It's not necessarily a power dynamic. I, I dated plenty of older men when I was in my 20s. Uh, I've never felt a power dynamic. I've always felt like they treated me like an equal. Um, when it comes to money, uh, you know, don't be with somebody who uses money as a power play, plain and simple. Plain and simple. Should I let the man do all the work at the beginning um, stages of a relationship? No, you should always be reciprocal. Thank you. He must have really loved you, waited 10 years to heal. Ah, uh, yeah, he sure did. He sure did. Um, he sure did. He was almost done. I was almost done. We almost divorced you guys. Like no joke. We almost got a divorce. It was pretty bad. I couldn't even imagine you insecure. You're such a strong woman now. Yes. This is uh, like, this is the beauty of my coaching practice is everything that I teach you. Like we are so common, right? We are so common. Insecurity is common. Uh, vomiting your past is common. Having fights in a relationship is common. I am so much like you, but I've pulled myself out of the common, which is dysfunctional at this time in our culture. What is common is dysfunctional right now. I've pulled myself out of the common and, and created something extraordinary within myself and in my relationship. And this is what I do with you. I teach you how to achieve the extraordinary. And I don't teach it because, oh, I read a book and it says this and this is what you should do. That's textbook teaching. I don't textbook teach you. I teach you, yes, from social sciences, sociology, anthropology, biology, psychology, because I'm a nerd. I apply all of it, but I applied it to myself and then I applied it to others and I saw the formula work over and over and over again. And I'm like, it's so easy, you guys, it's so simple. Like, let's do this, we we can do this. My readers right now, their minds are exploding because they know I say this in my book 
let's do this. Where are my readers at? Where are my readers at? Say, here I am, all my book readers. All my book readers, where are you at? Does it always take three years to see changes after reading Fake That Shit? It, it, listen, we fought for 10 years, right? So it took three years for us to settle. Uh, if you've been fighting for two years, it can take even less time, right? So it, like, there was a lot of pain to erase, right, with time. My readers, hello my readers. Um, when I say let's do this, do you, do you like, does it, does it click a part in your brain where you remember re reading those words in one of my books? Look at all the here I am. Hello, my loves. Oh, I love you so much. I love you so much for being here. I do. You guys are amazing. You're my tribe. You're my army. You are my change makers. I don't know which book should I get. So there is a what book is right for me uh, button in the link tree in my bio. Go hit that up. My boyfriend won't apologize even though he's dead wrong. Uh, my love, I do suggest you come get a coaching session um, so that I can help you work through this problem. It's me again. You broke up with me and I feel so empty. Uh, my love, come get, like, come back queen. Get come back queen to work through those emotions. Oh, somebody just got an audiobook. Somebody just got Fix That Shit in audiobook. I love it. Love it. You guys love your audiobooks. Chili. You guys love your audiobooks. That makes me happy. Oh, my cuddle puss. My cuddle, cuddle, cuddle puss. Do you feel pressure to have a perfect relationship because of what you do? I honestly don't. Uh, I really don't. Um, so that's like what came first, the chicken or the egg, right? Uh, so what came first, the pressure to have a perfect relationship or having a perfect relationship and teaching you how to do it? It was, it was developing the perfect relationship and then teaching you how to do it. Um, so here's the thing. I started my business when, like I started, I started, like I, I started branding. I wrote my first seminar. I delivered my first seminar when my husband and I were fighting, when we were on the brink of divorce. I had already started changing my behaviors, um, but I didn't know if we were gonna make it or not. Uh, when I came home from giving my first seminar, all of this stuff had been moved out and I thought, this is it. This is the end of our relationship. Like, we're done. And I still had hope at that point. Uh, yes, I am writing uh, two books right now. I just finished writing uh, a dating book for men. So at that time, during that time, when we were so rocky uh, and I had just become a dating coach, I, I said to myself, I, like I remember this, I went, fuck, I'm gonna be a single dating coach. That looks ridiculous. And then I said to myself, fuck it. Like, I'm just, I'm just going to navigate this. I guess, you know, like, I mean, I, I wrote No More Assholes. I was writing No More Assholes when I realized I might be a single dating coach. And, and I just said to myself, that's just going to be more, more content for me is me following my own advice to find the right partner. Lucky for me, we saved our relationship. We stayed together. We saved our relationship. And I kept being consistent with what I teach you how to do and fix that shit. I stay consistent with it no matter what happened, no matter the bad days, I stay consistent. And that consistency of me taking control of my behaviors, of me being responsible for my behaviors, of me being responsible for my own emotions, that consistency day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute, really recreated our relationship. Um, I don't have a perfect relationship because it looks good on paper. I have a perfect relationship because I practice what I preach. I don't ask you to do anything I don't do myself. 
So the perfect play is still in formatting. Um, I've been sending it back for some formatting fixes because I have a certain vision in mind. So my formatter is doing another round of, of fixes in the formatting to give it the visual appeal that I'm looking for. Um, so in a day or so, I should have the editing back. So yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited. What's the date today? How long do you meditate? How long to meditate? So you should get in 20 minutes a day, my love. Thank you so much for sharing. No relationship is perfect. Oh, this one's pretty damn good. This one, okay, so no relationship is perfect. Oh, this one's pretty damn good. This one, okay, so you know, we no relationship. We make out every day, we laugh every day, we support each other in what we want to do in our lives. Um, we are planning our future right so even though we've been together for 15 years we're still we're still looking at how the future is going to unfold uh, i was talking to my husband yesterday about doing some interior decor in the house um uh we don't fight so tell me what's wrong in that relationship that's this is and so those of you who uh have been following me for a while when's the last time for like those of you who are who are doing what's in fix that shit you're following my advice when's the last time you had a fight with your partner hard to let go for my ex come back queen uh come back queen the combination like there's there's a tuba combination that really lets you let go so come back queen to heal with the hurt no more assholes to get you planning your next relationship like it's hard to let go of the past if you don't even know what to look for in the future so get your mind geared looking at the future. What are some signs a man wants something long term? Uh, he will ask you. So when when you first start dating, um, when you first start dating, don't tell him what you're looking for in a man. Wait until he asks. So what are you looking for in a partner? This is a tell. One month. Uh, fighting is not healthy. Fighting creates a distance. We get self-protective. We pull our good emotions in when we fight. The opposite of, of retraction is growth. When you stop fighting, your good feelings grow. Uh, hi. Fighting is not healthy. Stop thinking fighting is healthy. You're saying that because you're regurgitating what you've been told. You're saying that because every time you had a fight, there was a release. You're saying that because after a fight, you feel more connected. Here's the thing. What you released was an overabundance of stress, fear, and anxiety that you did not take responsibility for. You didn't learn how to manage yourself. So you used your partner as a lightning rod what what the reason why you feel more connected is because you disconnected so stop disconnecting stop retracting your good feelings stop not dealing with your emotions and vomiting them into your relationship general page count of books like stop not dealing with your emotions and vomiting them into your relationship general page count of books like like 200 some pages right uh fix that shit is my biggest one this is 255 pages can i join you ask a question what's the question one month i just bought my third book custom made my books are gateway drugs my books are gateway drugs gateway drugs if you read one you want more sorry not sorry so what are some good questions to ask on a first date? I actually have 15 in No More Assholes. Um, I really do suggest you grab No More Assholes and use this as a dating guide. Is there such thing as too soon to get intimate? If you're just looking for a hookup, no. But if you want a long-term relationship, no kissing, no sleepovers for three months. How do I know which battles to fight? You gotta get into fix that shit, my love. You gotta get into fix that shit. Like, how do I know what to let go? Here's the thing, if you're not shrinking your amygdala, if you're not reducing your capacity for stress, fear, and 
and anxiety, then you keep thinking your partner is triggering your overabundance of those emotions. But the fact is, there's a part of your brain that is overactive, that is feeding you those emotions. So you need to get into meditation and shrink your capacity to feel those feelings. And that is gonna give you perspective on what you should be talking about. But until you shrink that part of your brain, you have too much of those emotions and you are ascribing them to your partner and giving them a story and thinking, I need to talk to him about this. I need to talk to him about this. I need to talk to him about this. He needs to change this. You really do need to read Fix That Shit. I cannot stress this enough. Um, I cannot stress this enough. Is an not fighting but sorting out issues you can have conversations about stuff um right like absolutely you can have conversations about stuff you don't need to fight about things right healthy fighting is actually constructive conversations not fighting at all there never needs to be fire meeting fire fire Uh, are you in your office? No, my love. I'm in my living room right now, sitting in front of my picture window. Boyfriend doesn't text me and I write custom made, but I still want more communication. Um, so come get a coaching session so that I can get into the particulars and like unpack your situation and see what's going on here. My boyfriend, oh, my boyfriend and his ex still text each other on birthdays, can't stop thinking about it. So is that just twice a year? Is that it? Oh, this is beautiful. I use the stay silent, right? This is a, this is a communication tool. Choose silence is a communication tool. It's what you do before saying something so that you can assess what you're going to say and see if it's you know constructive to the relationship or destructive to the relationship. Um, so uh, I used the stay silent you suggested and it, it worried him, like you said, because you will become more quiet when you start using this tool. And sometimes they're gonna say, baby, are you okay? Because you're thinking things through. Um, and so I say, when that happens, you're gonna reach out, you're gonna touch them. You're gonna say, yes, baby, I'm fine. I'm just working through something in my head. If I need to say something to you, I will. So somebody used this tool. They said, I used the stay silent you suggested and it worried him like you said. I reassured him, no fights. Oh, can my boyfriend you fix that shit? Yes, he can. Thank you, that was extremely helpful, yay. Uh, when do you fit meditation into your schedule? What would you recommend for a busy person? So you can split up your 20 minutes into 10 minute blocks. Um, you Like when you leave your work and get in your car before you start the car, you know, do 10 minutes of meditation before you hit the road. Uh, first thing in the morning before you grab your coffee um, or after your coffee before you get dressed, right? Find your sweet spot after dinner is made and people are just sitting around watching tv there you can fit 20 minutes in right so you need to find your own sweet spot for me i like it best after lunch uh, do lives ever get repetitive just curious and uh, not to me because i understand that i get new people coming in all the time so <coughs> So there are things that I do say, you know, right? Because the new people will ask those questions and that's okay. Um, but I, repeatedly, right? Because the new people will ask those questions and that's okay. Um, time. So there are things that I do say, you know, repeatedly right because the new people will ask those questions and that's okay um deeper things isn't the, the usual um and then uh and then i repost my lives on my youtube channel so guys i do have a youtube channel i do have a playlist that's called live stream so you can go re-watch my lives 
Um, if you're watching one of my lives, you're like, oh my God, that was so good. Um, can you say that again? Oh, I'm like, I miss that. I want her to repeat that. Thank you, my loves. You're so cute. Um, when you hear me say something, you're like, ooh, like I really want to hear that again. Take a screenshot. Notice what I'm wearing. Um, when you hear me say something, you're like, ooh, like I really want to hear that again. Take a screenshot. Notice what I'm wearing. Look for that live to pop up in the live screen. Um, playlist. I'm really good. I just got an email from my formatter. I'm going to take a look at it. Do you guys mind if I go on my laptop for a minute? Go reapply to my formatter. Uh, do you mind? Do you mind? Your advice is incredible. What do you personally struggle with? What do I, I personally? Um, so I still, like, I went into, like, a really deep depression. Um, no, there's sneeze, sorry. You know this. You're so cute. Uh, so, and, and for years, I was uh, um, alcoholic. Uh, I did, oh, like, I was addicted to alcohol and cocaine. Um, so I was, I was medicating instead of, uh, dealing with my emotions. I didn't know how to. Um, and, uh, so occasionally I want to get drunk. Um, I just want to binge drink. I, I, I just, I just want to take, you know, and, and for me, the purpose is like, just take myself down, like literally just knock myself out. Um, so I still have those urges. I would say that's what I still struggle with. Um, I don't have any struggles in my relationship. I don't have any struggles accepting my partner. I have no struggles feeling accepted by him. Um, there was a number of years, guys, when I was starting this business and putting it together, uh, like I was, I was creating, right? Like I wrote all these books. I, at the same time I was writing my books, I was building a platform, website, Facebook, um, you know, Instagram, uh, blog posts. I was doing so much work, YouTube channel, creating videos. I was doing so much. So there was a lot that I was doing, but not a lot of money that I was making because this was all just building an educational platform for you. And, and so for a couple of years, my, like my husband saw me not making money and he's like, you know, you really need to get a, a J O B. And I was like, Oh, just, just, just give me some time, right? Can you just give me some time? Uh, so that was a little bit of a struggle, right? Is that I knew that he wasn't approving of what I was doing because it wasn't generating, uh, it, it wasn't generating a tangible outcome. Can we get an autobiography? Your life is so interesting. I don't know if it's too personal, but I love it. I am going to write an autobiography. I have the title. I have the cover image. I will absolutely be writing it. Absolutely, absolutely. I have so many books to write, you guys. Um, it's insane. It's insane how much writing I have to do. Definitely, in, like, one of them is an autobiography, 100%. How do I listen to audiobook once I buy it? I'm a little confused. Uh, so I, I actually give you, like, a, a PDF printout of how to listen to my audiobook. I, I suggest an app depending on if you have an iPhone or a Android device. Um, thank you, my love. Uh, and um, I do teach you like what's going to happen when you go to download the audiobook. And so okay for my boyfriend to talk to a girl who calls him a crush even though she knows he's taken. Um, how what's I, why is he talking to her? Is she an ego stroke? Like, what is the story? Do you believe in astrology compatible? I don't study it very much. Do you have any sessions available today? I don't, my love. Um, Sundays are a day that I don't do sessions on, but um, I, I do have some time slots available tomorrow. I'm a Scorpio, my husband's a Gemini. Uh, I'm turning the Wi-Fi on on my laptop. I don't know if it's gonna make my videos skip or not. 
I work at home. Yes. How do you feel motivated to always get ready? Uh, I'm just so passionate. Like I'm excited about what I do. So it there's no lack of motivation. Um, and there's so many things that I can do that if I'm tired of doing uh, one thing, I can just go to something else. Like uh, if I don't want to do a live, I can work on my book. If I don't want to work on my book, then I can create some videos for TikTok. A formatter is somebody who makes the who makes the visual aspect of the book look good. Uh, the text, the size of the text, the spacing in the text, uh, you know, the fonts that are used inside the book, that's a formatter. Are you still writing a book about relationships with mothers? That's one of the upcoming books, yes. I love joining in just to hear you talk and educate myself. Thank you, you're so welcome. You're so, so welcome. You should make a TikTok about your writing process. I want to be an author. I should. I should. That's not a bad idea. Um, I do suggest you come get a coaching session if you want to be an author, by the way. I, I, like, I'm a life coach. I niche in dating and relationships, but everything that I do, I can coach you on. I can coach you on how to start a business. I can coach you on how to write a book. Um, I can coach you on how to deal with family members. I can coach you on how to deal with friends or frenemies. Uh, I do believe in soulmates because I have one now. Because I have one. I didn't believe in them until I got one now. Because I have one. I didn't believe in one now until I got one now. Because I have one. I didn't believe. Let me. Okay, let's see what he said here. I sent you the updates after fixing the issues. Man, that was fast. Okay. Okay. What does a typical day look like for you? Um, well, it looks like a lot of this. A lot of this, a lot of being on my computer. Um, so I get up in the morning, um, like a weekday, uh, you know, I'll make my husband breakfast while he's getting dressed to go to work. He takes his breakfast to work. I have coffee. Um, I start my day like first, you know, brushing my teeth, big glass of water, cup of coffee. I read the news. I check my stocks. Um, and then when my coffee is done, that's when I start work. Um, and so uh, work usually is writing. Um, at this time it's writing. Uh, when I wasn't writing a book, work started with coaching sessions. My first coaching session was at 10.30 in the morning. Now that I'm writing books again, my first coaching session doesn't start until the afternoon. So I do my writing in the morning. I do my coaching sessions in the afternoon. If I don't have coaching sessions, I do more writing. Uh, what did you do before seminars and coaching? I was a stripper. Uh, and in the evening, I make TikToks and I go live. And in between all that, I make lunch and supper as well. If I have to go do some grocery shopping, I'll go do that. I'm starting to date again after 31 years. Uh, after a 31 year marriage, any advice? Yes, get No More Assholes. Um, get this book here, No More Assholes. You uh, want to understand how to date very important uh, okay let me take a look at this so my formatter um, sent the perfect play how to recognize a soulmate that takes time that takes time uh, but no more assholes definitely helps you recognize a generous long-term thinker and a generous long-term thinker, no more assholes definitely helps you recognize a generous long-term thinker. Okay, good. So let's take a look at this. Oh, oh, no. Okay, uh-oh. 
looking oh, looking better. Sorry guys, I hope you don't mind watching me work. I know this is a super exciting, but but we got oh somebody getting freebies, guys. By the way, yes, the audiobook is available through the link tree in my bio, Mister Ch Ch Charlie. Mr. Charlie's right here. Isn't he the goodest boy? He's such a good boy. Hello from sunny California. Your hair looks good that way. Thank you. Uh, I feel weak for watching intimacy. Oh, like, no, it's not, that's not bad at all. Uh, the book. So any of my books you can get in ebook format on uh, Amazon or Kobo. I think Barnes & Noble might have it too. Uh, you guys are learning so much. That's awesome. Sneak peek. Any of your books good for learning to be alone? All of them start with meditation. That definitely helps you like come into yourself, right? I honestly, I do teach you independence in No More Assholes and Fix That Shit, like all of my books, because like being independent, comfortable with yourself, happy with yourself, confident, have elevated self-esteem, that is a cornerstone in a healthy relationship. So I do teach you that in all of my books. How do you deal with a non-affectionate, lovey person? Um, I need affection, person. Um, I need affection, so I I definitely want to be with somebody who's affectionate because it's important to me. Um, so I just need to make a note here. Oh, Charlie, what you doing? Ta-da! Then we got formatting. Good. So much to look at. Oh, so better. Better, better, better. <clears throat> yeah. Hello. Got somebody coming over we're gonna go for a walk so Kim who I'm going for a walk with is uh, somebody who showed up at the first was the first trade show first trade show that I did um, like really did uh, first first trade show that I did when I was branded um, also um, this was the first time I got on stage as a dating coach and I got everybody in the audience up and dancing and moving and she was in the audience and like, I noticed her. It turned out her mom, this was on the Sunday. So it turned out her mom had come on the Saturday, seen my booth, came and talked to me, um, went back, told her daughter, you need to go see this girl. So Kim came, uh, got to my booth when I was on, like just about to start on stage. The girl who's manning my booth said, oh, she's on stage, go run out there. So she came, I noticed her in the crowd because she just, something about her, right? Um, she bought a bunch of my books and um, long story short, she became my assistant because she like really leaned into everything, really used it. She was getting over a breakup. She used uh, my tools to heal after the breakup, elevate her self-esteem, calm her anxieties, go for walks. We're gonna go for a walk in the woods with the dogs. With the good, good babies. Okay, good. Okay, good. Whew, it looks so much better. Okay. 
Okay, so much better. Where are my men at? Men, where are you at? Say, here I am. Uh, what do you look for in an assistant? Somebody who is passionate about what I say. Somebody who like is has so consumed my content, they are literally using my language, um, right? So somebody who really knows what I say, who can uh, like basically repeat what I say. Um, men, oh, look at my men, look at you. So men, let me ask you something. When you're reading a book, when you're looking at a book, when you're leafing through the book, does it matter to you if it looks fancy on the inside? Uh, you know, in other words, is like in terms of like uh, visual aesthetics, do you like bells and whistles or do you don't care about that or just want it to be plain? What is your... Uh, what is your take on that when you're looking at something in a book? Do you like it to look fancy or do you like it to be plain or does it not even matter to you? Oh shit, here's Kim. Uh, does it matter? Give quality information. Uh, hook in the title, awesome, okay. What matters is the name and what it's about, awesome. Okay, good to know, thank you, I appreciate that. So Kim is here. Kim, who wants to talk to Kim? Who, ooh, ooh, Charlie, Charlie. Who wants to talk to Kim? Who wants to ask Kim questions? Yes? Chantel much different in person as a friend than on social media. Honestly, she is just amazing on all platforms. She's changed my life and I'm just so pleased to have her in my life and the energy that she displays is just so positive. And yeah, I love her to pieces, always have, always will. Um, her books inspire me. And I constantly read them, like, <laughs> no more assholes. I always pick this one up. Um, <laughs> actually, I might need another copy. I keep giving them away, too. Um, <laughs> and, oh, sorry. 
Maggie? How do I become happy alone? I can't be on my own without crying and anxiety attacks and feeling alone from a user on TikTok. Oh my goodness, I can so relate to that. Yeah. Um, one thing that Chantel taught me that I didn't know before, I've heard of it, was meditation. And I felt like, how do I do this? I have no clue. But in many of Chantel's books and many of her, um, well, her videos and everything, I learned how to be alone but comfortable with being myself. Like you can't start a new relationship until you truly love yourself. And uh, meditation is where I learned that and just checking in with myself every day. Um, there's an awesome video on uh, Chantel's YouTube channel to just checking in with myself every day. Um, there's an awesome video on just check Chantel's YouTube channel to just checking in with myself every day. Um, there's an awesome video on uh, Chantel's YouTube, what's done, and I just felt like I needed to recharge my buttons, <laughs> get my energy back, and just love myself again. So that truly is, that truly helped for me. Am I missing anything on that topic? I don't think so. I think you're pretty good. <laughs> it's, it does start with meditation for sure. It does. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you shrink your amygdala. Yeah. So how do you, here's Charlie. How did you, when you first started meditating and it first started like actually affecting your brain, mm -hmm. how did you notice that? I just noticed, like I noticed a huge shift. I just was so Ready? relaxed, so calm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I have the power inside of me to, to get to the point of happiness again. Like I didn't think it was possible as I know many of you can relate. It just feels like I couldn't get out of my pajamas. I couldn't put makeup on. I couldn't care for myself because I was so sad and so low. Um, but really we have the tools in our handbook and in our, our tool bag right there. And yeah. I just, I needed that. Meditation was key. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It's everything. Yeah. What's the biggest thing that you realized about yourself after healing from the breakup? I realized that I'm a lot more fun than anybody let on. <laughs> I was constantly talked down to. I was constantly thinking there was something wrong about me. And I just believed it. And then I realized, and Chantel helped me discover that I have a, a spark inside of me that was just wanting to be reignited again. And it took a little bit to get to that point where I truly felt like myself. But once I got there, I just kept going up, up, up. And I am so happy. I'm so comfortable in my own skin, which is a feeling that I never had before. And yeah, it certainly feels great. And you guys will get there too, for sure. How long did it take you to notice a difference with the meditation? Honestly, instantly. I knew right away it was the right thing for me. Um, I was just so... So calm after that, like the energy was amazing and I just never knew that it was inside of me. So I really hope it was just so, so calm after that, like the energy was amazing and I just never knew that it was inside of me. So I really hope that you all give it a try because it's, it was step one, it's, it's, it was step one for me along with no more assholes. <laughs> Actually, I think I started with the comeback queen. That one yeah. was a really good one, the comeback queen. And then I switched to no more assholes and... It was all uphill from there, or downhill, depends how you look at uphill, it. Uphill, 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 right? It's, it's a positive a way. I'm like, wait oh, well, a second. Both of them are bad. Both? It was I all gravy. Uphill sounds like it's like I'm really working to get it up was, to the top. It was all gravy from there? It was gravy. It was I like gravy? it. Who doesn't like gravy, honestly? <laughs> it, was, it was all cotton candy from there. Mm hmm. Meditation can shrink my amygdala. Yeah. Mm hmm. Definitely. You look amazing. Oh, yeah, thank you, do. you. I just did my hair yesterday. Are you doing Hannah? <laughs> I'm doing Hannah. Chantel yeah. taught me that. I was like losing my hair, not sure if it was stress re related, most likely. And um, Chantel taught me how to do henna, which is a, like, if you haven't heard of it, it's amazing. It's a natural powder that colors your hair. This is close to my natural color, and I definitely achieved that with this. I put a little bit of almond too, it makes it a bit darker. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. What do you do for uh, my profession? Pro I am an activity director for, at a senior's home. I do um, programming for seniors and anything from bingo to car shows. It's pretty fun. <laughs> oh. 
Are you looking for a relationship or are you letting it come to you? Or do you not want one? I think right now, like, I am, I'm not like looking for a relationship. I feel that for me right now, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's going to happen in the right place, doing something that I love. And for me, that's what I'm hoping for someday. And you know what? I feel like my cards are finally, everything's aligning for me and it's going to happen. I feel it in my heart. Thanks everyone. What's everybody else doing today? How are you enjoying your Sunday? <laughs> oh, honey, do melon. We want to be your friends too. <laughs> About to go buy a new TV. Sounds like a good day. Sleeping in, nothing wrong with self-care, self-love. Awesome. Love my hair, oh thank you. <laughs> it turns out different each time and then in the summer it kind of gets brighter but winter it's a little more of those like fall dark tones. Love, Hannah. I love your community, Chantel. They're, they're so amazing, nice. Aren't they? They're so uplifting and yes. friendly and kind. Yes. Love to everybody. Yes. <laughs> Chantel lives in the most beautiful location. Oh my goodness. I love the drive here every single time. There was a convoy of Amish buggies I had to wait for to turn into her driveway. <laughs> oh, I know. Happy Sunday. Yeah, happy Sunday. Any more questions for us out there? Do I have a dog? I wish I had a dog. No, I don't have any pets right now. I certainly miss it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yep, I'm a natural redhead. And I guess blue eyes, some a little bit of tinge of green in them too. Yeah, I'm from Stratford, Ontario, Canada. What's on my list of qualities for my next partner? Certainly somebody who's like a man. I'm looking for a man. Generous, long-term thinker. Yeah, girl. <laughs> Chantel taught me that. All in this book. No more assholes. I hope you all have one. Chantal and I like I, I reached out to her after her show and um, I, I actually bought two books I bought no more assholes and um, I bought the comeback queen and I ended up um, just connecting out to her telling her like oh my gosh this was the fix for me I I just I can't even explain honestly how how much it changed my life and how positive it made me after such an awful breakup 
And yeah, we just connected that way. She has amazing advice and she was looking for somebody to help sell the books who actually experienced um, all the magic from the books. So I, I ended up joining her. I, I went to trade shows with her. We had a lot of fun. Um, I helped to sell some of the books and just talk about my experience and what happened to me and how I went from um, heartbreak to healthy and whole and happy just by following all these simple steps in her book. Welcome everyone. Oh yeah, my experience. No, I'm happy to share that. Um, so yeah, so what happened to me was I met, so I thought was the man of my dreams. He was this great, big, tall, strong, good looking car mechanic. And my heart just, yeah, I, I was just interested right away when, when we started, um, when I first saw him and I, he was like hanging out with a girl that I used to go to high school with. So I, I knew her, I didn't really, I didn't know who the other people that she was with were. Um, but yeah, so it was just at this pool table, pool club night. And so I met him and after that, like, we hit pretty instantly, hit off, and we were we began dating shortly after that. But from the get go, it was like a foursome, pretty much. Like um, it was it as for friends. Like there was um, Justin and Jada, who were um, boyfriend and girlfriend, and then there was me and my partner, and we did everything together. We're best friends, and yeah, I was with him for two years, and then I started feeling really strange. I felt like something was going on between him and his friend, who he said was just a friend. Um, but long story short, I did find out later on um, through social media posts that weren't so private uh, that he was seeing her. And I knew it all along. I had the sense of my gut. I just didn't want to believe it. So that was a slap in the face, although I really did know that something was happening, that something was going on. And yeah, I just, I was heartbroken when I found out that she, he was cheating with her and so was her boyfriend who was quite committed to her as well. So yeah, the boyfriend of the girl that cheated with my ex, um, we're still quite good friends, um, him and I, and uh, we just kind of got through it together. But yeah, I've, I've never looked back. Um, in the beginning, it was really difficult, but then I found Chantel and here I am. <laughs> Am I on TikTok? I am new to TikTok. I need to learn from Chantel how it works, honestly. <laughs> I think I made like three videos, but um, it's like Lucky Heart 20, I think is my name. Um, L-U-C-K-Y-H-A-R-D-T-2-0. But anyhow, I have to work on that, make some videos. To go for a walk. Sure, yeah. Yes. I'm, okay. That sounds like a plan. It was so nice to meet everyone. Thank you so much for all your kind comments. Appreciate it. <laughs>